just want to say something <laughs> that I was watching uh, watching one of the Fox News broadcasts, a show called The Five, and the five people sit around and table and discuss the issues of the day. And uh, there's one guy named Greg Gutfeld. He's a pretty outspoken character. And anyway, towards the end of the show, he just went on this like uncharacteristic rant. And after he got done, they were looking at him like, huh? Why'd you do that? And he just looked at him and he goes, in 20 minutes, I'm going on vacation. I'm out of here. So just give me some space, will you? Well, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have some freedom that I haven't had for a long time. Not a, not a full two weeks off, but, you know, a day here and a day there. And just don't have to prepare. I don't have to prepare for next Sunday or the Sunday after. So um, I kind of felt the same way this week. And that exuberation uh, made it difficult to prepare for today. But I got what I got, and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it won't be a rant. <laughs> anyway, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. To the elders among you I appeal as a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's sufferings and one who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Lord, I pray your blessing upon this word. Speak to us through, by your spirit, through your word. Touch each heart as is needed. Open the eyes and ears of our heart that we may hear you. In Jesus' name. Peter's word was... Clothe yourself, all of you. Clothe yourself with humility towards one another. In the custom and culture of the time that this letter was written in, men dressed according to their status, their societal status. And that's an important concept in terms of what Peter is telling the church to do, the believers to do. He's saying, clothe yourself with humility toward one another. And Peter begins this letter, or in this chapter, by doing exactly that. He had been with the Lord. He had seen him die. He had suffered for the gospel. He had preached a message that converted 3,000 people. He had reason to take pride in his ministry and who he was as a believer. Yet he says to these men that he writes to, to the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder. I'm just like you. I'm just like you. I was a witness of Christ's suffering and one who will also share in the glory to be re revealed. He says, I do exactly what you do. I work exactly the way that you work. I struggle with the things that you struggle with. So he puts himself, he sets the bar kind of low. He says, we're all the same. We are all the same. And that's very important in understanding because we all, in putting on humility like a garment, and the Greek word clothe means that, it means to put on clothes, but it also means to gird, which is a strong word, to tie it on tightly. Cover yourself with humility so that that's what people see when they see you. I mean, I know, you know, my wife, I can guarantee she'll be wearing blue or beach clothes, one of the two. And, you know, I wear vests a lot of the times and mock turtlenecks. We all have our patterns. Nancy and, you know, the, and Louise here, the daughters of the American Revolution, are the red, white, and blue crew today, you know. So you can pretty much judge 
what a person's going to be wearing, but what they are. And that is the way it is. As Christians, we need to clothe ourselves with humility because, especially among each other, because it can be difficult to love the ones that we're closest to. And that's an important concept. Turn with me to uh, Philippians chapter 2. Beginning at verse, verse 1. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. In his coming to earth, he left royalty, he left all the resources in the universe, and he put on the clothing of this mortal body. He stepped down and became the lowest of the low. He was despised and rejected by men in this mortal body, in this flesh, and he humbled himself. This was an act. This was an act, a willful act he decided to do. And so it is with putting on the clothing of humility. There are times when we need to not seek our own. There are times when we need to, even though we may be right, even though we have, there is no reason for someone to disagree with us, even though we may be perfectly clear in our judgments and the other person is just misinformed or not seeing the world through the eyes of a humility, a humble heart, but they are seeking their own. It is in that place where we take on and put on the clothing of humility and say, I don't need to have my own way. I don't need to have my own way. I can judge someone, but be careful when that finger points away from yourself. Amen? It's easy to judge other people. It's easy to judge how they act towards you. And it's easy to seek, to speak and say, you got it all wrong. You're not right. You got no right to say that to me. You got no right to act like that towards me. And thank God that Jesus Christ didn't do that when he went to the cross. Those men who tortured him and beat him he could have said, he could have looked them in the eye and, and convicted their hearts in a heartbeat, but no, he humbled himself and he did what he came to do at the will of his father. He humbled himself. There was an event maybe a couple of years ago where our dear brother, Matt Dykstra, got pretty upset at one of our meetings, one of our business meetings. And <clears throat> I, I, don't, I know some of you are aware of this, but um, I don't think I've ever said it from up here. But everybody was in agreement except for Matt over an issue. And he came to me afterwards and he was really angry. And you know what? I couldn't believe the presence that I felt in my soul at that moment in time because he was mad at me and he, he wanted to hurt me with his mouth. And he was also touching me with his finger. 
you know, well, hey, but the Lord gives grace to the humble. And in that moment, I felt a tremendous compassion and love for that man. I felt a, a real sense of sadness that he was in that place. I knew why he was so upset. He saw things through a whole different life experience and lens than I ever did. And there were things that were important to him and he came to believe in his life and that was who he was. And so I just hung in there and I didn't say a word and I waited till he calmed down a little bit and I did my best in the moment. But I never struck back at him. And he called me the next day and he said he was a jerk and he apologized to his credit. So praise God for that, you know? That took humility on his part. It didn't take my correction in order to accomplish that. It took the Holy Spirit to do that. When we find ourselves in these situations, these situations that are difficult, whether it be at work or with each other or with family, whatever, put it up there, your husband, your wife, let it come to mind. These things, if we look back at 1 Peter, he says in verse 6, Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all of your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. This is the God who began a good work in each of us, and we'll see that through. Humble yourself under God's mighty hand. When that happened with Matt, I wasn't humbling myself under Matt's attitude. I was humbling myself under God's mighty hand. This was happening for a reason that God had allowed. And I'll read a thought that I had about this to you. It says, as we humble ourselves in the situations that challenge our pride and our self-righteousness, we are essentially humbling ourselves under God's mighty hand. In this we know Christ, and he knows us. When we act out so as to get our own way, we may succeed, and we may be totally justified and right in doing so, but... We have failed a spiritual test. And this is when we know Christ, the humblest of the humble. When I am there with a humble attitude in a difficult circumstance, he is right there with me. When my pride bristles and my self-righteousness comes like a wave, and I do not put it down as I am best capable of doing so, I reject God in that circumstance and in that situation. I am rejecting him by my pride. But that Jesus would say to me when I meet him, I never knew you, scares the daylights out of me. But in humbling myself in difficult situations, he will say to me, I was there with you during that. I knew you in that moment. And I knew him in that moment. You know, there are times when we pray for situations and things like this to go away. And I don't think that that's necessarily a healthy thing and I, I remember the stories of Daniel in the lion's den. He could have asked God to speak the word and all of those lions would have fell down as dead. But God had something bigger and better in mind. He had that he may lift you up in due time. Daniel's time in the lion's den was not the time that he was going to be lifted up and exalted. It wasn't during the night when he slept, probably quite fitfully with those animals all around him. 
They didn't touch him, but I'm sure that he was nervous in the circumstance and the situation as they prowled and growled and moved. He felt the presence, he felt the breath, but they never touched him. And God allowed him to go through that circumstance and that situation. And the next day, his time to be lifted up came. And the same thing with the fiery furnace. When they went through that, the next day, there wasn't even a smell of smoke on their bodies. He doesn't intervene so that we would not have to go through these things. Rather, he allows it to the perfecting of our wills. He allows it to the perfecting of our wills. And there are times when humbling yourself in difficult situations is not necessarily the right thing to do. And that's when you'd have to compromise the truth or compromise morality in a circumstance. But in relational situations like we've talked about this morning, God gives us those as opportunities for spiritual growth and strengthening in our souls and in our hearts. And he will lift us up in due time. We are told that if we suffer as Christ suffered, we will also reign with him in glory. Suffering produces glorification. And not now, at a future time. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is entitled to that now and he was entitled to that when he was being whipped and tortured and spit upon. But he humbled himself under God's mighty hand and allowed his will to be conformed to that of his father, accepted the circumstances that he was in, thanked his God for it, and now he will live and reign in glory with his saints forever. And he can't wait. And the time is getting close. So humble yourselves under God's mighty hand. And in due time, he will lift you up. And while you're going through that, cast all your cares and anxieties upon him because he does care for you. And he will bless you mightily in due time. Amen. Right, well, thinking if there's something else. Oh, yeah. Um, last week we did change for change. I can give you that. And uh, uh, you guys, slackers, $911.43. <laughs> I took the bucket to the bank. I'll catch up with you on that today. That's a, that's a labor of love, man. <laughs> that's a labor of love. So, and for um, many of you, people will be talking to you, people from the nominating committee will be talking to you about service um, down the road uh, coming up for the annual meeting. And uh, thank you for what you have done, all of you who do, and for all of you who will continue to do so. so. Else? Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.